Good morning. My name is Jeff Cameron. On behalf of our team at RDIEC, we'd like to welcome Mr. John Minchell. Mr. John Minchell is here this morning uh, to discuss uh, the program at Brandon University called PEMP. PEMP, excuse me. Um, it's a program for the education of Native teachers. Um, John and his uh, team today are going to discuss the uh, training that they receive, um, the career opportunities, um, and some of the, uh, just the working conditions within the education field and, and how people can apply. Uh, just a reminder before we begin, that after you watch this presentation, uh, please complete the survey found on our website, either by using the QR code or go to www.rdiec.ca. By completing this survey, you're automatically entered to win a $50 gift card, which will be drawn uh, for at the end of every month. Thanks again, Mr. Mitchell, for this informed presentation uh, to help students uh, in their quest to make a better choice about future employment. Take her away, John. All right, thank you, Jeff, uh, much appreciated. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I just wanna to begin today by uh, acknowledging the land here. We respect the treaties that were made on these lands and acknowledge that Brandon University campuses are located on Treaty 1 and Treaty 2 lands, traditional homelands of the Dakota, Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dene, and Métis people. So as Jeff mentioned, uh, I work in the Penn program now at Brandon University. I was, prior to this, I was a, I was an educator for 34 years in the public school system. I spent about half of that time in Saskatchewan and in the southeast corner, about 17 years there. And then upon leaving there, I came to Brandon where I, I spent 17 years. Uh, at that time, after my 34th year, I transferred over here to the PENT program. Uh, one of the best moves I've made. I've met some very interesting people, tremendous uh, communities and uh, some of the students we have here today uh, are just tremendous leaders in their schools and communities. So first thing I wanna do is have each of those students introduce themselves. And I guess we'll just go in order of uh, Stacy, Lori, and Craig in that order. So go ahead, Stacy. Hi, thank you, John. Um, yes, no, uh, my name is Stacy Desjardins. Um, I joined the PET program um, back in uh, 2019. Um, I live in a small community um, of Laurier, a small little French community. Um, my family is from uh, my small reserve not far from here. Um, and I had the, uh, the pleasure of joining the PET program. Um, it has been a tremendous experience for me. I am, I can see the end of the tunnel. I am almost there. Um, I'm almost done my courses. Um, so um, we can, I can talk more about that later, but yeah, no, thank you for having us, John. Um, and uh, it's, it's been, I have nothing but good things to say about the PEN program, so. Lori. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Lori Martin. I'm from Musaic, Musaigan Cree Nation. It's about central Manitoba. Um, yeah, I also have nothing but good things to say about the PEN program. I've had the opportunity to join. I'm in my fourth year and um, it's a family tradition. My mom was in the PEN program, my aunties were in the PEN program, and I just had the best of luck of um, joining and having this great opportunity. And that's it. Thanks, Lori. Craig. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Craig Hardesty, and um, I joined the Penn program back in 2015, and I graduated in uh, 2019. Um, I'm from Hallowater First Nation, and I teach at Wanapigal School. Uh, that's the school on the reserve there in Hallowater. Uh, as well, um, I have nothing but uh, good things to say about the Penn program. Um, and the people that uh, are part of the, the faculty there and uh, past and present students as well. Terrific. Thank, thank you, Craig. I just want to add that each of these students, uh, I asked them because they're in different aspects of the program. Craig graduated, as he mentioned. Stacy's about to graduate. She came in with a prior degree, so she's getting ready to graduate here. And uh, I think Lori's potential grad two years away. So they've all had experiences in the program and they're all at different stages. So 
great to have you guys. Thanks for doing this. I just want to mention about Penn. Uh, Penn's been around Brand University since 1971. So this is to be our 50th uh, anniversary of the program here this year. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have the celebration we wanted to. Uh, but just to have the program around that, that long has been tremendous. Whenever I go to the Northern communities and visit schools, I always have people come up to me and that are, have been teachers for a few years and, and, and shout out their uh, affiliation to Pent over the years, just like Lori mentioned in her intro there. So it's been around a long time. It's been, we put in that time, we put over around 650 graduates back into schools in primarily Northern Manitoba, but um, the odd one, Northern Ontario and Northern Saskatchewan. So um, what we're gonna do today is just move through a PowerPoint presentation. The students, uh, I've told them to jump in here at any point that they want. We're just gonna share some information about the program. And uh, at the end of it, each of the students is gonna uh, say a little something about uh, their experiences in the program. So uh, we'll just move through here. So the PENT program is a Bachelor of Education, Bachelor of Arts integrated degree uh, program. And so it, it, it's, you need 150 credit hours, 90 of those uh, in the art stream and 60 in education. And we have either the early years or middle years stream. Um, it typically takes approximately five years for students to go through the program. Um, some of the students that come in with a prior degree, obviously they don't take as long because they mainly need their teachables and their, and their education courses. So they're usually out of here in two and a half years or so. So the unique thing about PENT is that um, the time frame, most of our, I'd say 95 to 98% of our students in PENT are teacher assistants in schools already. And so what happens is their community releases them for April to July. They come down to Brandon to take courses here. And, um, and then they go back to their schools uh, from the start of September. And anybody that's prepared and ready to do a field experience, they do that in their home school. Um, and so it's really unique that way because we find the students have a really good sense of how a school operates uh, from their time as an educational assistant. And so they're jumping into the field experience is, is pretty smooth transition in most cases. Um, so this year, Penn's offering 35 course options. And unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately, in some cases it's fortunate, but uh, we're, all, we're all online again this year as we were last year due to the pandemic. So um, students are in their home communities and unfortunately some have had to move to different communities just because of internet access uh, to be able to access the courses. So. Um, one of the good things though that's come out of the pandemic is Pent has never offered courses in uh, fall and winter before, uh, just because uh, obviously the students would, wouldn't be on campus at those times. But now that we found out we can make this happen through distance, we are offering courses fall and winter. So that may allow some of our students to finish, get through the program a little quicker. So that's a good thing that's, that's come from the pandemic. So here's just some of the costs. And the reason I put this up here is Pent, Pent, is, uh, Pent pays for itself. Um, so we charge a different tuition rate than the rest of the university here. Uh, the nice thing about that is we've been able, here's the Brandon University has put some money into the, to our cost recovery program and allowed us to reduce our course cost from $800 in 2019, or 2019 to $600 that it is this year. Now that the really nice thing is that includes all your textbooks and supplies as well. So when the Penn students arrive on campus, all they need to do is go to the bookstore, pick up their textbooks, they get their supplies from here and they're off and ready to go. So just as an example there, uh, most students take eight courses from April to July and uh, at 600 a course, that's $4,800 um, that we think now is reasonable um, based on the fact you get your textbooks and supplies included in that as well. Uh, the other piece of coming to Brandon is the housing and, and it's not, it can be a challenge to find housing in Brandon. Some of our students live in the university uh, dorm. Some choose to uh, rent a house in the community. Um, it is, it can be difficult. Some bring families with them and then it makes it a little bit more difficult, but uh, we've, we've in the past, we've been able to find housing one way or another for the students that want to participate in the program. So, and here's just some strengths of the program. Um, as I mentioned before, the experience as an educational assistant is very helpful. 
uh, the timing of the courses. So what the communities do from April for the April, May, and June piece of the school year where the students come to Bren and they backfill their educational assistant positions with other people from the community or, or find other ways to cover it and release those students each year at that time. So that way the students can work um, from September to March and then uh, come to university for those four months. You get to do your field experience in your home community, which is, is really nice. We have had some people that just to get a different experience will go to a, a different community just for you need four field experience courses uh, throughout your program. So sometimes one or two of those can be uh, in a different community if that works out. It's always good to have them uh, get different experiences as well. Many of our instructors um, have been in the program uh, over and over. We're staffed mainly by sessional instructors. We've had a number of them return from year to year and they've developed a good rapport with many of our students and uh, they really contribute to the nice feel of, of the PENT program. Um, the picture on the right is uh, it's our PENT always has our family barbecue each year when, when we're on campus. And this is just a picture of one of our students, Dwayne and his family. Uh, enjoying a picnic down at the Assiniboine River here and that's probably my favorite day of the, the whole pant season is to get everybody together in that way and uh, just to see them in a relaxed atmosphere when they're not panicking about a paper or or something of that nature so that's that's always a that's always a really nice day for me and I think for the families and students as well. Now some of the challenges, uh, obviously one of them is leaving home for four months. As I mentioned before, um, sometimes people bring families with them, other times they leave their families behind. So that four months can be a, a big chunk of time each year for people to be away. And, and uh, these challenges I've listed here have basically come from exit slips I do with students each year, just to get a feel for what they're thinking with regard to the program. So that's always one thing that comes up. Uh, the academic rigor of a program as well. Um, if you haven't been in school for a while, and we do have people join our program at all different stages of life. Some come in in their 20s, some come in in their 40s and 50s um, to realize that dream of becoming a teacher. So um, if you've been out of school for a while, that can be difficult to jump back in. So there is some academic rigor, rigor here um, uh, that can be challenging for many of our students. Uh, committing to five years in the program, that's uh, if you take the four months off campus times the five years, you're looking at 20 months uh, of your life in a different community. And so that can be, a, when you look at that long-term thing, that can be a, a real challenge in committing to that many years away from your family if you do leave them behind. And in terms of academics, writing and math have been the two areas that the students have identified as areas that they really want support in. And so what we've done with that regard, we used to have a one week orientation and now what we've done is added a second week to it and, and put some writing and math skill sessions in that second week. So that really allows our students to spend a bit of time before the courses actually start, um, you know, to work on some of those things and, and uh, boost their skills back to where they were before. So um, always challenges. The other challenge, one that I can think of that isn't listed here, Eight courses in four months is a lot. It's a hectic schedule, it's really tight. Uh, we run three slots a day. Cor students take courses in two of the three. So they may take a morning, uh, three hour class in the morning and three hour class in the afternoon or one morning and one evening, uh, depending, but we try and keep it to eight uh, courses over that time. So that's two a month and that can be challenging in terms of timelines as well. So. Um, I just want to add, if any students here want to jump in anywhere, please feel free to do that. Um, okay, so rewards to the program. Obviously, at the end of it all, uh, you become a certified teacher. This is a picture of Bertha, who graduated, I believe, in 2018. And uh, so that was my first year in the program. And uh, you can tell by the look on Bertha's face, she's very proud of what she's accomplished, and, and, she, and she should be. Uh, the self-respect that I see from students when they come into the program as they move through it, uh, it is just tremendous to watch uh, the confidence they exude. Uh, and then as a role model back in their home communities is, uh, is tremendous. And I, I haven't been in the program long enough to, to really see a lot of that, but I do hear that from schools and communities and uh, just how students uh, leave the community as as, as young people and come back as strong leaders and role models. So 
uh, that's uh, a real one of the real rewards to the program. Uh, I'd like to jump in here. You bet. Um, yeah, I was just going to say too, like um, along with uh, those um, rewards, um, you got to think about too uh, all the people that you enter the program with and meet. Um, you really build connections and network with people <clears throat> that branch out throughout throughout uh, Manitoba, and uh, you make lifelong friends and um, connections that you can um, build up, build upon and draw upon uh, later in your career. Like um, being a second year teacher now, I reach out to some of my past um, colleagues and um, just get some outside perspective on some lessons and things like that. So along with those uh, awards identified there, um, that's something else you can take, take away from the program as well. So I just thought I'd add that in there. Appreciate that, Craig. Thank you for that. Uh, so then moving to supports, what supports are available? Uh, one of the nice things, uh, an alumnus from Brandon University has been a real supporter of the PENT program and, uh, and of Indigenous uh, initiatives in general. And so this gentleman has donated, he and his wife and family have donated iPads to each of our students each year. So when you come into the program, part of uh, the orientation week is getting you a new iPad, uh, each student, and uh, then we bring in computers, or sorry, uh, people with technician knowledge about computers and they uh, walk the students through how to use them and how to use them as support in the program. So uh, that's a real nice support for students. Student services here has been, I would have to say, awesome. Um, we have uh, anything from math and writing support to uh, uh, library support. And they quite often, uh, our, our students kind of take over the education building for those months of April to July. We're kind of outside the regular program. And so quite often our supports come right over to the education building and uh, set themselves up over here to help us support. And uh, so writing people, library people have all been uh, tremendous to make themselves available. There's also personal counseling things um, to help students if they need that through some of the perhaps the challenges of leaving family behind and some guilt with that or whatever the case may be, there's counseling available if necessary. The IPC or Indigenous People Center here on campus is also a really nice support for our students because they do really supportive activities there. Uh, sometimes they do things that can take people away from that mentality of their academic piece for a period of time. So they're, um, they do activities there and that's where uh, Quite often you can connect with the elders. Uh, there's people, places to smudge there if you want to smudge. So that's a really nice uh, connection to have here on campus as well for our students. I also, I mentioned the instructors before. Um, the community of Brandon also has some, uh, you know, some agencies that we can connect our students to if they want to. And we have done that in the past. And so they've been very supportive. Uh, normally we hire a student coordinator as well. And what that student coordinator does is uh, obviously helps with make sure students have the supplies they need. Uh, sometimes they help with housing for people that are struggling to find that housing. There's just a real variety of things. They, they plan our annual celebration every year. We have a big celebration with two or 300 people where we recognize our graduates for the year and they bring families and members of their community down. It's a really, really nice, uh, just a really nice way to celebrate uh, the effort that's gone into the program by the students. So. And the final support I have to say is Bernice. And that the picture on the right is a picture of Bernice Galvin, who's our admin assistant here. Bernice has been with Pent for 18 years. And she always jokes with me that I'm the seventh uh, director that she's had to train for this position. And she's hoping to get me trained over the next couple of years. Um, so yeah, Bernice has a wealth of knowledge. And, and more importantly than that is her connection with our Northern communities and uh, just, um, Really, we get instant respect when I mention the name Bernice. So uh, I always thank Bernice for the work she does here whenever I do a presentation regarding our program. John, if you don't mind, I'd just like to say a couple words. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, I was just going to say, um, like John had mentioned, uh, me being um, that the students that come kind of with a degree already. 
um, and being 30, five years old when I joined the program uh, and now 37, that transition um, Pent made it uh, very easy for me. Uh, going back to school X number of years later um, was scary for me. And um, that transition of leaving your community, like John had mentioned, um, was, you know, it, it's a scary thing for any student. Um, but how the Pent approached it and were very accommodating and that sense of family that you get um, and the supports that are put in place um, for the students, for us um, to, to achieve our goals and to succeed um, were tremendous. Um, anytime um, I, I, I needed help or had questions, you either pick up the phone or go down to the Pent office and uh, they're always there um, willing to, to answer our questions and to help guide us um, down the right path. Um, so, um, yeah, and those connections, like I say, I built, we build within the program as well, um, uh, with amongst our peers and amongst, you know, other fellow students, um, we still have those connections. I still have profs that I reach out to, um, like Craig had mentioned earlier, that, hey, I don't know how to go about this. Um, you, you know, any advice, whether it be with regards to how to deal with situations um, in the workplace or as far as uh, instruction. Um, it's been, it's been a real, uh, a real uh, pleasure to, to grow and to be able to almost graduate um, with this program so far. So. Great. Thank you, Stacy, for that. Um, I always add this slide at the end about, because people usually ask me, well, how do we, if we're interested, how do we get started? So the first thing is you have to be admitted to Brandon University, and uh, that's, that's an online application piece. And then you also have an application to the actual PENT program, and that's just trying to find out more information about you. Um, and so both of those, and I, we're, we're looking at putting a new system in place, administrative system at BU. So those th things are both probably going to go hand in hand, whereas Right now you get them at separate times. And so I'm looking forward to being able to do all of that all in one, one time frame. Uh, letter of recommendation. So we need something from your community, from a principal or a superintendent or a uh, ed, ed authority person to uh, just as a letter of recommendation for you to jump into the program. Every two years we need to do criminal records and child abuse registry checks. Uh, every education program is like that. And then if you're funded by, uh, you know your community or your band then we need to get a copy of that funding approval as well and so that the picture on the right here is uh, i'm sure you all recognize the guy in the middle tom jackson he in a personal relationship with uh one of our instructors she she knew him from years past and they've stayed connected over the years and she had tom on his way through to toronto to speak she had him stop in brandon and talk to our Penn students i believe that was a couple of years ago now but that was a real honor for me to spend a bit of time that day with Tom and uh, just to hear what he has to say to the students was was really inspiring to me. And uh, so the two guys beside him, Gavin and Terrence, both uh, he, he they really connected well during that time that Tom was here. So um, yeah, so I'm just going to go on and give the students a chance here now. If they have anything they want to say, just to wrap this up before we have a chance for anybody to ask questions. Uh, I don't know who would like to start. Maybe Laurie, do you want to start? Uh, sure. I just wanted to mention uh, Westcast. Uh, the first time we went was in 2018. You, um, I don't know how that happened, but you selected students to go and me and Craig got to go to University of uh, Calgary. And Westcast is a conference of, of um, Western Canadian Association for Student Teachers. And they gather about three to 400 uh, student teachers, different areas of, um, uh, different areas of like Regina, um, Manitoba, BC. And we all gathered in Calgary and got to meet people and connect there. Eh? And um, I was really inspired there, like some other, um, testimonials were really hit home and then the next year I seen um, they were advertising it was uh, Vision 2020 their theme was igniting the fire and there was one presenter there that really 
got me. I said, I want to be on stage there. I want to be a presenter. So we, I went to go introduce myself to the, because they introduced the people for Vision 2020. And I slipped by and went and introduced myself and got to connect to some, with some people uh, on that board or whatever. And then I went back home and I said, how can I start something worthy of being like to pre uh, to um, have a presentation, you know? And uh, I there's this building, it sat empty for three years. And with this truth and reconciliation and how um, Frontier School Division is um, like mandating it, I guess, I don't know, like slowly introducing it to our um, students in the schools. So I um, created a cultural center where um, students can come, it's smudging is optional, and how teachers can uh, weave culture and traditions into the curriculum. And so yeah, we, we use it for arts and crafts uh, last year, this year, well, at the beginning, um, students started making um, star blankets. It was the grade eights. They picked their own colors and they did it in the evenings with their parents. So that gave them a real, um, like reconnecting their relationships with their parents. And it was a really good thing. It was a really positive thing and I'm pretty, proud that I created a space to help people um, work on their relationships and pretty happy with the, uh, happy and sad too because of COVID, everything just went to a stop, but we got to work around it and jump through loopholes. Like we couldn't all be there, but we designated time frames for them to come in with their families. So there was like, yeah. So that was one of uh, the successes from this, um, this uh, attending Pent and being included in that Westcast was uh, a great opportunity. Yeah, that's, that was some good work you did, Lorraine, in your community. So uh, congratulations on making all that happen. And then I know you went back and presented on that the next year uh, to the, at Westcast. And uh, so good for yeah. you for making that happen. Yeah, Vancouver, it was a really um, awesome experience. And uh, the people I work with in front here, uh, her name is uh, April Khan. She's, um, oh, I, for, I forgot her position, but she's a assistant to the chief superintendent. And she's really um, has a lot of resources for me if I ever need any if I ever need anything, she's just there to help and really supports Indigenous culture and language. Awesome, great. Thanks for sharing that, Lori. Um, Stacy, do you want to go next? Yeah. Um, well, kind of like I had mentioned um, a little bit before, um, Pent has been a wonderful experience um, for me. Um, I uh, the transition was 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 easy for me was great the supports i couldn't have done it without the supports um and uh the the family feel um has really has really um helped it's funny when i when i think back to when i first started my bachelor of arts degree 10 15 years ago um and uh native studies wasn't a teachable at that time and how now it is and how um myself like reconnecting those roots and bringing it into like kind of uh within touch with what Lori was saying, um, bringing it um, within the schools and in and back into the community. Um, I myself um, experienced that somewhat. I didn't grow up on the reserve. My mom is from the reserve um, and I didn't grow, grow up there. So kind of reconnecting myself, it's kind of part of my story and um, part of the awareness and the cultural aspects that I want to bring forth um, and bring light to, um, to, the, to our community. Um, and uh, and uh, the pent has helped helped me um, realize and grow. I've grown so much within within the uh, program. Um, like when we had the the teepee, um, 
uh, Craig and Lori, you guys were, I believe you were there that year and the TP was burned um, on site at Brandon University and how we come back stronger as a community and we, we built five more TPs. And so even, even partaking in that experience um, was, was phenomenal and that sense of togetherness that and how we come back strong as a community is is overwhelming um, and now I've actually become a spokesperson for um, my division in our division I've been asked I've put together a presentation I myself have been asked to now share my testimonies within the division um, and so that's kind of how I see uh, maybe my path leading down down the road is um, is advocating for for our people and for um, you know, bringing awareness to that. So um, I, I think the pen, the pen just played a big part in that for me. Um, and, uh, like I say, John and Bernice have been have been great. Um, anytime I have questions, it's a phone call or email you know, away, um, and the, the cross and and, and whatnot. Um, I miss not having to go back to the pet program in person. Um, this online stuff was a challenge for me, but like I say, every challenge presents some opportunity of growth and learning. Um, and so what can we take away from this? And, you know, having to teach online last year, um, now I'm a little more tech savvy, we can say so. <laughs> and that is not one of my forces, but yeah. So um, that's, thank you again, uh, John, for all of your guys' support through, through this journey for me. You bet. Craig, the old grizzled veteran teacher here. <laughs> the old grizzled veteran. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know where to begin with this program. I mean, it's um, it's given me so much and given my family so much. Um, the opportunity to to uh, go there and and learn and um, grow um, has been phenomenal. Um, and the whole <clears throat> family orientation of the uh, program really helps um, when you're away from your family for four months. So, I mean, that's a tremendous uh, aspect of the program that I don't think a lot of people spend too much time on, but uh, it really helped me um, being away from uh, two young kids and the comforts of uh, normalcy, I guess. So um, that uh, uh, had a big impact on me um, in my success there at the Brandon University and in the Penn program. Uh, what else can I say about it? Um, and, and the, the people there, like the, the professors and John and, and Bernice, um, they're always there to support um, the students and set them up for success. Um, we really can't ask for anything better. I mean, I've, I've attended other universities and um, there's nothing in Manitoba that remotely um, comes close to um, the supports that are given here at uh, Penn and uh, Brandon University. Um, I, I don't know what else, much, well, I don't know what else I could say. <laughs> you just gotta well, go that's, there. Uh, <laughs> that's great, Craig, thank you for sharing that. And uh, that is one thing that I don't think we talk about enough is the family appeal to it and the support that students get from each other in the program when you get 100, 115 in the same building. Uh, every day for four months, it, it makes for some really nice connections. So um, I just want to uh, open this up. Anybody have any questions that you might want to ask any of the students or myself regarding the Penn program? Um, I don't think I have a question so much as just to thank you for coming out, of course, but also um, just to compliment Brandon University for kind of thinking outside the box and coming up with a program uh, that really accommodates a student's schedule. Um, I, I like the fact that, you know, you've got uh, teachers or educational assistants working in the school, um, but then, so they've got that experience, but then they're, you know, they've got that opportunity to come to university 
in the spring, um, you know, to work towards their degree. And I don't know of any other program like that. And I, I think that's a really awesome, um, you know, program that, that students in your province have an opportunity to, to take advantage of. Um, so thank you. Yeah, that was great. Thank you for that. I'd just like to uh, mention just what a wonderful presentation it was. And uh, John, Stacy, Lori, and Craig, I'd just like to thank you so much. I uh, have also taught for 33 years and from 1986 to 1988, I was in uh, a little place called Thicket Portage. It was east of Thompson, Manitoba. And um, I was there for two years and it was just a uh, wonderful experience. Um, the culture, uh, the, uh, the, the different things that I learned about the land, the animals, the water, uh, life, family. Uh, it was unbelievable and it was one of my best experiences ever. I just wanted to share that with uh, Stacy, Lori and Craig. And uh, I'd like to also mention that running water does not flow back. Um, so it is with life and uh, I'm just so happy that when you mentioned uh, the community life and, and coming back strong and, and the light that you're giving your communities uh, because of this program and uh, just going back and sharing these things and you really couldn't have a better person uh, helping you out uh, as, as a human being than Mr. John Mitchell. And uh, you can see that in your folks' eyes. So I just want to thank you so much. And it's just such a wonderful opportunity for all of the kids out there in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta. And hopefully we can get this out to a lot of different schools and people that are aspiring to be teachers and, and helping out in their communities. So thank you so, so much. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Much appreciated. Thanks for the time today. And thanks. I want to thank Stacey, Craig, and Lori for, for jumping in here as well.